Hello, Peter4789 Zeros Cyrus here, and welcome to Cyrus Gaming Corner. What is this, you ask? Well, this is essentially a bi weekly podcast that I'm starting with Swordfish1390 and Force Reviews, where we basically be talking about anything gaming related. We might delve into other topics like anime down the road, but the focus right now is definitely on gaming. So, how are you guys' evening treating you? Pretty good. Not too bad. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, I'm doing good myself. So, today's topic of the day is a topic that we briefly touched on when we did the Final Fantasy VII Remake discussion. With that topic being Xbox 360 JRPGs. Ha, <laughs> Xbox 360 JRPGs. Remember guys when the PS3 had scarcely any JRPGs at the start of its release and how a lot of the JRPGs was surprisingly reserved for the Xbox 360? Or at the very least was time exclusive? Yep, I remember and that. Then, and then and then shifted. <laughs> yeah. What got me about this part is how the PS2 was an absolute haven for JRPGs, such as the Dark Cloud series, the Tail series, the Valkyrie Profile 2, Riata Stories, Final Fantasy X, etc. So to see the PS3 library so devoid of JRPGs at the start of its inception was pretty surprising. But came the Xbox 360 JRPGs. I came to remedy that JRPG itch, to a degree, and we're here to talk about them. Luckily, the Xbox 360 JRPG list isn't that extensive, and I am limiting JRPGs that were either exclusive or timed exclusives. So, yeah. But the first game I want to discuss is probably Last Remnant. (laughs) Last Remnant. Perhaps the only Xbox 360 JRPG that was perhaps too ahead of its time, if only for the <laughs> fact that you couldn't play the game at a stable enough frame rate when the game first came out. Well, Last actually, Remnant, if you were like me, video game. if you were like me, who had the privilege of installing to the hard drive, it didn't fare much better. Mm-hmm. It's slightly less of a slideshow. But show. but but let's to be fair, the hard drive install didn't come to way later. So this is way after the fact. Yeah. Like I tried the game. For a few minutes, saw him play like slideshow and then quit. I mean, it seemed do, just you, what. Do you guys know anyone who's played and beaten that game with with the slideshow frame rate? No, I I haven't. No, I don't anyone know anyone who's beaten it. Period. I remember an article about the game coming to the PS3 and the developer saying, "Ah, oh, the PS3 can't run the game," and I'm thinking in my head, "The Xbox sure can't." <laughs> I mean, it seemed interesting with how the combat system revolves so, around so many characters. It's basically the f- like it reminded me of kind of like SRPG with it with simulating army combat. But apparently, well, that doesn't really matter if you can't run the game now, can you? <laughs> well, outside of the combat, the game ran okay. Yeah. Well, the combat. Yeah, combat was where it suffered most. Yeah. But combat now, is where the, the main form of the gameplay is going to come in. So now, the, the I was able, luckily, to play it on PC to yeah. kind of now that I have a computer to run it before they took it down off the Steam Steam Store. Uh-huh. And the combat is actually more catered around luck of you having the ability to actually use items to cure your allies or effectively, I guess, be able to f- defeat enemies. It's kind of a roll of the dice, per se, rock, paper, scissors. I never could figure out truly how you actually commanded and what aspect of control you had to the combat. Because in one outcome, when I played the game on Xbox, I didn't have any way to cure my characters and they died. In another aspect, when I played it, installing it to the hard drive years later, I had the ability to cure them. I didn't have it before, so I, I don't quite understand the combat very well. So even... With the even with me being able to play it at a stable frame rate years later, I still find the combat in that game very weird mm-hmm. and like kind of hard to a understand. Lot of, a lot of like randomness to it. I feel like the the AI kind of dictates like what t- tactics to queue up because you're not given manual commands. It's just like, oh, attack, heal. Like it's just it's a bunch of random list of, of tactics that you have no control over what appears and what not what doesn't. So sometimes you'll have like a heal tactic that you when you don't need it or you won't have a heal tactic when you do need it. Sometimes you'll have like, oh, this guy can do a special attack. Why? 
who knows? No one's never explained why the prompt just appears. And it's well, see, really, I thought at really first really it had to do with characters who were your party. Like, you know, but then again, when I played it again, it's the same characters in the same party. It's no different. So how is it that the first time you play it, oh, this guy has ability to heal. Oh, then you play it again, it's like, oh, this guy has ability to a special. But it's the same characters. So... Yeah, the game is just... The, the, the combat made no sense to me. I, I Someone tried explaining it on a Reddit TV. post once. I found the difficulty super punishing. Well, how far into the game before you start realizing it was really difficult? I, I got to, like, the final boss of disc one. I could not beat it at all, and I just... I, I officially gave up. And that had a lot to do with the whole random thing, right? Like, not really having control of what you were doing, per se? Well, it's, it's, it wasn't... I mean, that was a big part of it, but that wasn't even the f just that. It was the fact that the game level scales. So, by fighting battles, you have a battle rank, they call it, which is kind of like your overall level. But every time the battle rank goes up, the enemies get stronger and stronger. Mm -hmm. So, you're supposed to... You actually really should um, avoid encounters at, at, all ta at all costs, which is really ironic because the sole focus of the game is the combat. So, you're actually actively avoiding the very thing that the game wants you to do <laughs> that is very confusing so i could see how that could be a problem especially the fact that the story is actually interesting you know i at, at times i i did like the characters and then i was kind of interested in the world but whenever the combat came around to progress it i just didn't look forward to it i think the the premise is pretty interesting and it has a cool world and i also like the villain but like the actual plot is like pretty standard, and I like a good. couple of the characters. Some of them are cool. I like the the king. I like the the night chick. She was I don't remember anyone's names. The concept of remnants is really cool, and it has a really cool backstory. So I think that the writing had potential, but it wasn't like fully realized because it was pretty clear that the focus of the whole game was the combat, and I feel like the storyline kind of took a. Uh, it was kind of like not swept under the rug but it definitely wasn't the focal point well i do have it on steam i do hear that the switch and ps4 versions of the remaster is supposed to be a little bit more improved. so i may end up maybe playing it again at some point just just to give another god's honest try i guess oh yeah i can't um, life I, life is life is too short <laughs> i can't do it. yeah well I will, I will say this however the music can we can at least agree on one thing the music actually was pretty freaking amazing and Oh, the music is gorgeous. The soundtrack is amazing. Hmm. Mm -hmm. What surprised me the most about this, about the performance at least, was that it was only made for one platform, the Xbox 360, so you would think they would at least try to make the game playable since you're leveling the platform that uh, you're releasing the game on. So to see this bad performance out of a game that only really had one console to be developed for is pretty sketchy, I think. Well, I think the other issue was they probably were in two project. They couldn't just can that game. Yeah. They probably had to just release it as it was. I know the state of it, and that's not it's normally not Square Enix to allow something like that to just kind of get pushed out. You know, they're known for, well, I wouldn't, well, they're known for having good performing games. I mean, 15 had its issues. Yeah, but, but, but it didn't run like a slideshow, at least. No, no, it didn't. And also, depending on which Xbox you had, too, believe it or not. For some reason, every Xbox had a different chip, you know, because they had the whole Red Ring issue, because they had oh, the Xeon okay, don't, don't, don't processor, and they had the, they had those other processors, and I heard the game ran differently depending on which one you had. Some ran better than others. I don't understand how that makes any sense. But that also played a crucial role into how that game performed. So if you had one that had a newer processor, the game ran better. But that ain't saying much. Don't remind me of the Red Ring, man. I played <laughs> like I played the shit out of Oblivion on my Xbox 360, and I got like a Red Ring two or three times when I was playing that game. So, uh... Luckily, I never had a Red Ring of, of Death. Me neither, but. <laughs> Uh, I, yeah, had, just, man. I had it. I, I talked to Xbox support and they had to send me a new Xbox. <laughs> hey, how long did oh that one last? I don't know, two or three weeks. <laughs> what? <laughs> just to <laughs> just to get it delivered. Oh, I thought it to last. I thought it was, wait. Oh, oh. No, no. no. I thought it might last two or three weeks. Oh, no, uh, no. How long did it last when you got it though? Uh, a 
few months. The two, that's three, dope. four months, I think. That's still bad. Yeah, that's that's pretty bad. I don't know if it, my Xbox is just faulty or not, but my second Xbox that they sent me got a red ring down the road too. So. I bought one of the arcade edition Xboxes that had the Jasper chip, which is supposed to be like the bulletproof one. And how you can tell if it's Jasper is that it had a white plate on the front of it, not chrome. And it only came in the arcade model, which is kind of weird. It didn't have a hard drive. So I bought one that didn't, that, that didn't come with a hard drive, had to buy it separately, and it ran perfectly fine. It was whisper quiet. It never got loud. And that one never gave me any issues. The first one I had was a launch model. That thing sounded like a jet engine on steroids. And eventually I had to get rid of that one. Not that, they, not that I was something wrong with it. It was too damn loud. When I found out they had the Jasper model, it was much quieter. I was like, you know what? I'm going with that one. This one, no. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so that game was interesting, though, and it's in its weird barrage of slideshow and craziness. That is one of the games I can say officially beat me. Mm -hmm. that's, that's saying a lot, because War beats a lot of games. It conquered like, me. Like, it was the one of the only games I quit just based on performance. Like, when I started out the game <clears> and <throat> saw how it runs, like, I'm not playing this. Okay, okay. Yeah, the only other <laughs> game that has a similar issue where it runs like crap, but it's on Xbox, it's on PS3, is Moving Souls. Yeah. So I can understand that one. Okay. If you have a game releasing with frame rate problems, you shouldn't release it. Like, I, I don't expect perfect frame rate, but I at least expect most of the experience to not be a slideshow. If the game ran like 25 frames per second during battle, you know what I mean? I could deal with it. Yeah. But 15 to 5? Sometimes 3? No, it's unacceptable. Okay, moving on from that, let's talk about Infinite Undiscovery. <laughs> Oop. Slightly less shitty. Yeah, the game not, ran, not like, if you talk good. about frame rate, we can get this out of the way. It ran perfectly pretty stable. Like, yeah. the combat was pretty interesting. It's really pretty simple, but it is yeah. interesting how they try to incorporate the combat to blend seamlessly in the overworld. And it did a better job of it than the Tales of Zestaria, at least. I will say, though, the game had an abundance array of characters. Yeah, it had point, an abundance I of characters. I think that was one of the game's flaws at the same time. Well, I, I'll say this. There are certain parts in the game where you're going through like a story section and then you see what it, the game would prompt you to select like a party. And then once you select your party, what, no, it was select, let you select party one, party two, party three. And then mm -hmm. once you select your teams, you actually go through the dungeon and you can see the other teams fighting alongside you. I thought that was pretty cool. They yeah, don't, it's, it's they, cool. They don't, really do, yes. they don't really do anything substantial, but it's at least a cool moment. It can see yeah, no, no, <laughs> you're not wrong. It was, there was a cool concept. The idea of whoever you played in your party you get to see them on the field. Yeah. My issue with the game was it, it broke away from you having any attachment to the characters because you had no time to let them evolve. And yeah, there was there was way too. There's characters. like over a dozen characters in yeah. the game. Yeah, there's you, even you, parts you, you, where I'm like, I'll see, I'll see a custom. That guy. Who are you again? <laughs> yeah, like. Well, what was your name? I met you like what, like four hours back in the game, and. I remember, I, I remember that part where one character just walked out at the party. Uh -huh. just, but uh, he came back like, uh, who are you again? <laughs> oh, you were my party before? Oh. <laughs> yeah. So if the game had to acknowledge its own mistake. Like, the only character I found interesting is probably Sigmund. But then, uh... Yeah, he was like the only decent one. <laughs> but then he, uh... Let's just say he's not in the plot for long. <laughs> but even, even his history... Is interesting and in how it uh, coincides with Capel is is interesting. Mm -hmm. and you I, know, I think, I think Capel got better as he he started off really annoying, but I think he started to get a lot better in the. Like, yeah, I think he grew up then, more. But then he got into his emo phase. Hey, hey, hey! <laughs> it can't be a JRPG game without an emo phase. Yeah, but I think it lasted a bit too long. Yeah. At least to me. Okay, just like before when I and when I said about the last game we talked about. Music-wise in this game, I thought it was good too. Matter of fact, I enjoyed it. Catchy would, battle theme. Yeah. Uh, I probably get back to the combat because 
I don't know about you guys, but I thought the combat was a bit too simple for the game. And that you can't. A A B. A A A B. Like, it's yeah, like. Yeah, it wasn't very detailed and evolving. Like, it's it, interesting it how. Like, it's, it's kind of fun when you can link uh, special abilities together. But too bad mm -hmm. you don't got too many of those, and you can really only use. The only character you can use is Capel, if I remember right. Mm, yeah, you don't get to control this, anyone else. And you this only get again to, falls to, back to what we said earlier. Too many characters, and I think because of that, that affected how them having any time to really evolve or detail the combat much I, more. I wouldn't Plus, mind, you only... I, I wouldn't hmm? mind if it was one character only, if that character was pretty in-depth. Like, if you made, like, Tales of Zillia 2 just make Uger only the only playable character, it would suck that you can't play the other characters, but I wouldn't mind it because Luger has so much depth to his character with different weapons, his arts, his like chromatis mode. Like you can make an entire game just playing as Luger, and it'll be still it'll be fun as heck. You can't with Capel because there's really nothing much more to his playstyle. You just unlock more abilities, and there's not even that many abilities to play around with. Plus, it bugged me that you can only hotkey two at a time, one to A and one to B, and that's yeah. it. Even though you'll get like seven or eight moves in the game. Yeah. Hey, I got a question. What? Mm. The, the, okay, now this is actually has a lot to do with the 360 generation. <clears throat> but did any of these games to you guys seem a little washed out graphically? I mean, color-wise, just like Last uh, Remnant and then um, Infinite Discovery. Didn't, uh, it, didn't, didn't the color palette seem kind of brown and gray? I'll say the Last Remnant. Magna Carta 2 to a degree, and Lost Odyssey and Enchanted Arms felt the most washed out to me. Mm hmm. So I, I would say this game had a lot of a lot of color to it compared to those games. Yeah, especially when you go into the section in the forest, and then Moon Rain happens for the first time. I think it looks beautiful during mm -hmm. that part. I think. Yeah. Well, obviously the prettiest. I mean, graphically most color palette looking game JRPG wise was uh. Uh, Eternal Sonata for sure. I thought the world of Infinite Undiscovery was semi-interesting with how you had to cut these chains and how there's a pretty big focus on the moon in, in terms of the theme. At least to me. I don't know. I don't know how yeah, you the, the, that. Yeah, the... I think the story is not bad. Like, actually, it has some pretty cool parts in it. I don't think that the story is anywhere nearly as bad as, like, Last Remnant, like we were talking about. Yeah. But, um, like, like, there are some cool twists in the story. A couple of the characters are okay. The the back, the, the lore is really great. The whole moon thing was really cool. It's not a bad story, but it's not, not told as most, like, that spectacularly. I would probably say The Last Remnant, probably... No, not The Last Remnant. I'd probably say Infinite and Discovery. Story beats felt almost similar to Man and Carter 2 in terms of how yeah. they're trying to mm -hmm. return the world to a more natural state and not rely on their equivalent of mana or whatever. Mm -hmm. that, that was interesting. Like, Infinite and Discovery does share some of the story beats with Magna Carta 2, I think. Just from. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just on Richard's. But it can't though. top Magna Carta 2, though. Yeah. yeah we, we'll get to that when we talk we'll, about We'll Magna cover Carta that one, 2. yeah. Uh, and Discovery, like, it's not it's not a terrible game. It's, it's not just a terrible game. really, really unpolished. It's, 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 it feels I, like... It's just a bland JRPG. Like, I feel like I, it's I just not a mishmash really, of a bunch of cool ideas, but none of them were really that polished. Like, I personally yeah, didn't have any memorable... I thought the game was kind of boring halfway, so I stopped playing it. Oh, okay. Like, you have that, like, link mechanic where you can link with other party members, but the button input is so convoluted and you're only going to use it in, like, specific hey, places. Hey, hey. So it's like, uh, why if, are you going to bother? If I remember right, you can ride the bear. I don't know. That was funny. cool. That, that you was cannot cool. beat riding a fucking bear. Yeah. He's a party bear. member, for yeah. fuck's sake. You got a bear as a party member. That is badass. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, you know how I say Sigmund was the only memorable character? Sigmund and the mm. bear is the most memorable character. <laughs> yeah. You know something's wrong when the bear is, is the most interesting character out of anyone else. And if, and if you want, like, memorable in terms of the bad, you got the twins, too. Oh. <laughs> like, okay, I hate kids in video games, especially when they're party members, but they take the cake as the worst I've ever seen in my life. Rico and Ruchja can die in a fucking 
fire, and I will laugh. Like, I don't mind kid characters. At least, I don't think I do. I like the kid characters and tails, but... They somehow managed to do it right. Like, yeah. Elise. Elise is, like, Elise is great. Elise is precious, you must protect her. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, the twins. No good. I'd probably say the, <laughs> the, the, I'd probably say the twins lost Odyssey. I didn't like them too, but uh, they were nowhere near as obnoxious. Yeah. And then, and then oh, I just want to bring back like one more thing, like like the flute mechanic. It's so oh my god, you like, have to use pointless. The flute. It's okay when it was pointless. It was agonizing mm -hmm. when you had to use it in order to fight specific enemies so that you can actually yes. hit them. And especially because like your normal walking running speed was okay. But when you use mm -hmm. the flute, you, you, you had to walk this slow ass uh, walking <laughs> animation. It's such a slog. So like it you... adds another two hours of gameplay yeah. <laughs> by itself. Oh my god. And, and I did not like the real time menus either. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about Blue Dragon. Do you guys play Blue Dragon? I don't like I played, that game. I played at all. the first disc. Okay. I, I, I haven't I, 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 I haven't actually played it, but it does seem interesting with how it's Akira Toriyama's I think that's his name, right? I I'm probably one of the few people yeah. that yeah, don't like Akira Toriyama's, Toriyama's design. I was literally just about to say I'm gonna like catch hell for this. I do not like that art style at all. I don't like, they, I don't like Akira look, Toriyama's they, art style at all. I they just like they look like off like they look like aliens or something i can like, tolerate it you, you, dragon did, did, did you watch do you watch dragon ball dragon ball z i do not and i i don't like oh the art style God. there either i hate it how it looks so fucking how weird about, uh chrono trigger or Still I'm, okay, no. I, I, I'm okay with chrono triggers art style and i'm okay with uh dragon quest i am not okay with dragon a blue, blue dragon, dragon or I, I have yet to like anything done by Toriyama. They all look like shit. I'm me. not a fan of his art style. I, I mean, I can tolerate Dragon Quest because it is an interesting game, especially Dragon Quest XI. I mean, it's fine, but yeah, the art style just cringes me. That's why I don't watch Dragon Ball Z. Like, like Dragon the Ball, eyes, they know. look like the the eyes. They like I said, they look like aliens. like aliens. I can't even describe. I can't even really put into they words. They look like they look like aliens. That's really the only way I can describe. They just look like. Like, I just think everything off. is so yeah, they're, like they're, 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 like you have it, folks. Sore. The Kira well, characters. To me, the art style, style, looks like aliens. This is my personal opinion. The art style just just doesn't appeal <laughs> doesn't to me, appeal to me. And especially because the way they were drawn, so like shaped like weird. The like, eyes are shaped kind of triangular or like really long and tall. Yes. Like or like they, I don't know, just something about it. It just throws me off. And the eyelashes were like just a bunch of lines above their eyes. It's like, what the fuck? I mean, to be fair. Hey, 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 man. You don't even need eyelashes for some of them. Super Sad 3 <laughs> design in Dragon Ball Z. Don't man. some of the characters have lines for eyes? I don't know. I just. Uh... Anyway, I will say of what I played of the combat, it's, it's, it's a typical, traditional, you know, turn based JRPG. I mean, it's, it's nothing to write home about. I'm not saying the game is terrible. It's not. The music is actually good, so it it, it come it, it. Hey man, that boss the, theme, the huh? boss theme, Eternity. Yeah, boss yeah theme. it's good. I'm not gonna lie. No, 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 I'm kidding. I'm fucking around. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, guessing. you didn't like it? No, it's the worst song I've ever heard for a video game in oh. my life. It is the worst thing ever. Ward, I'm wait, pretty wait, sure wait, you take some Xanax from playing it. Is, right. it, is it even worse than the? <laughs> is it to even, get to the, the cringy music? Are, are you saying it's worse than the catacomb theme in Tears of Graces? F? Yes. Oh. Yes, I am. Wait, <laughs> yes, please don't tell me about that. Uh, like, I, I, I love it, Graces F, but the catacomb theme was pretty bad. It was just basically a few. It was basically like three or four notes played it's to get three played notes again. Literally like, three notes back. <laughs> back to back. Oh god. Have you, have, Peter, have you have you heard the Blue Dragon Boss theme? No. Okay, I'm gonna link it to you. That way you can listen to it later. Okay. Well, if it, if, again, again, I haven't played the game in like a hundred. This is so this is gonna it be probably is just as bad as sort of saying it out to this be. This is gonna right? be this is gonna be cyberbullying, but yeah, <laughs> this is like okay, cyberbullying. Link, like, link the, link the uh, song right now. 
Here. I'm gonna mute my mic and listen to it real, real, real just, quick. Just, yeah, just, here, just, wait, just, hang on. Just, just link it to the Discord. Alright, alright, I found it, I found it. Alright. Oh, this can't be that bad, can it? <laughs> it can't be as bad as I remember it to be. Are you ready? Well, as good as Are you I ready? It was. Oh. Here it is. Blue Dragon Boss, Blue Dragon's Boss theme. Oh my fucking god, I forgot about the vote. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, that game is trash. <laughs> Yeah, it's been a long time, yeah. And that's another thing about that game, it has so many fucking vocal songs. It's ear wrenching. <laughs> that game has so many fucking vocal songs it's like, in it. It's Why? like the only boss theme in the game. It's the only except boss for the final boss. It is, yeah. It is it's the like only the boss only theme one. in the game. Yeah, you're right. Oh, I forgot boy. about that, yeah. Oh, it's the only one. I I got to a point I should I played my own music every time on boss. <laughs> no, I, I had music on my 360 save. No, you know, Xenosaga always gets shit for having the same two songs the entire game. One you, I'll take that. I'll take that over. There was three bullshit. songs. There was the battle theme, the one you hear that sounds like air conditioner noise when you walk around the hallway, and then the last song you hear with the boss fight at the end of the game. Yeah. At least the music in that game was done by the UK Symphony Orchestra or somewhere in the in, in England or in I the will, UK. I would say this did a better job. I would say, like, with Xenosaga, like, Elohim music and having no music at all, basically, during the exploration part, was sort of interesting. It kind of created atmosphere. It created a tone, mean. but it yeah. still kind of just got mundane after a while. I think. No, but no, Blue Dragon, that song, going. I just heard the vocals, it was, God, it made my ears rich. A part of Rosa, oh, made the, the lacking music make the final part of Xenosaga be interesting, just because you're hearing the song yeah. of line. I, I will say this though, it really, really needed a boss theme. It it just did. That, that battle theme, theme got Xenosaga episode one really needed a boss theme. Well, that, that song to be got fair, so to be fair, that didn't bother me. I know why they were what they were going for. They was going for atmosphere, and I and I honestly, well, the game did have music. The cutscene. No, 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 like, no, no, I'm saying no, no. What I'm I'm saying though is like, there's only. Like you, you'll fight like a very important antagonist, like the second to last boss, and you get you hear get into the fight, and all you hear is just the song you hear in random. Yeah, the same song. Like it just. It I doesn't, mean, it doesn't I can forgive the like first rigid. game. I can forgive the first game. They made up. They well, look at Xenosaga too. They added a ton of music in that game. I mean, a ton. and it backfired. <laughs> it backfired. <laughs> no, hey, hold on now. You don't like the music in that game, but I love. I like the I like the Yuki Kajura tracks. They're nice. I love Those every song in that game, including the one that goes doo 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 No, see, that's just like the Xenosaga universe is so like dark and gritty, and then you have this like bubbly techno shit. Yeah, that bubbly techno, that doo 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 that doo 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 song. No, what's wrong no. with the doo 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 song? It's so out of place. And I know it, you're walking around this town. It's all lively with doo doo. You got these cool tracks from her, and it's like, oh my god. Anyway, anyway let's let's circle back to Blue Dragon because. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, this is getting um, I think, okay, so I I only played like the first disc or at least most of the first disc. The impressions were like, okay, the story is super box standard. It is the most trite shit I've seen in a long time. It is <laughs> like it is. So he plays a bunch of a, a bunch of little kids, like twelve year olds, and then like one maybe well like one maybe thirteen year olds. I don't know. And then you get into you talk to the villain. He's like, <laughs> "I only did this because I wanted to hear you scream." I'm like, Bleh, "Fuck this game already!" <laughs> and then, it, like, it's so. I think uh, the best way to describe the writing, it's like juvenile. The he, it's got like I shit, it's got poop jokes in. You fight poop snakes in the game as enemies. You fight turds. Hey, hey, that's like a kind of a mixture enemies. of dragon, dragon quest yeah. there. And they have a spear and they kill you. And then the the combat is. Totally functional, it's fine, but it's just really, really run of the mill. The the oh, job system though, off for a second, mm -hmm. sword. It was the fact the dragon being like a Latin king of thieves. I like the shadows. Like I like how um, your characters didn't really have equipment. They had their like the main character has the blue dragon. You have a guy who has like a minotaur kind of shadow. They all, and then there was a girl who had like a phoenix. Like, that's oh really yeah, cool. you're talking about how the, so, talking about how, they, the, the how the how the the so they things like, kind of come in the so body in like, like a uh, form. Like they had like personas. Yeah, kind yeah, of like, yeah, yeah, more or less. Stands. Honestly, that was pretty cool. You don't really see games where you see like the shadow of this like being behind them that is attacking for them. And then so um, the the job neat. system is like it's basically Final Fantasy V, but like on crack because there's so much flexibility. You can mix and match different skills from different classes. Mm -hmm. You can, uh, 
you know, equip different skills. Like, you can equip, like, black magic and white magic if you're, like, a, a warrior, whatever. It's, it's a really in-depth system, and I think that out of every aspect of Blue Dragon, the job system is the coolest thing it has going for it. It's really, really unique, and, um... I, I actually I would like to see more systems like it. It's a really really great system, but everything else about Blue Dragon it's pretty generic. Generic, boring, pretty, and pretty like a loaf of bread. It's expired a long time ago. Pretty forgettable. Vanilla and RPG. Unedible, exactly. Probably the last of the exclusive Xbox 360 games. Well, I guess we talked the last Revenant, but uh... Magna Carta too, right? Yeah, I was going to talk about Magna Carta 2. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. oh, wait, yeah, and Lost Odyssey next. Uh, Magna Carta mm-hmm. 2! Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, fun fact, fun fact. What? Magna Carta 2 is not Japanese. Oh, yeah, it's, it's, not not. Yes. it's a Korean it's, it's it's RPG. It's a Korean RPG. It's a Korean-made game, but mm-hmm. I, do, I, I do classify it. As a JRPG. No, no, me too. Me too. I just it's like, because... oh, no, you got to give credit where it's due, guys. I still classify it as a Korean RPG. Because I, I, I just mostly means. classify it that way because it plays mostly like a JRPG. Yeah. yeah no, no, I see, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah I guess. It's like, like Dark Souls is made in Japan, but it's clearly not a JRPG. It, it's technically a RPG. It, it, it's, it, it's, it came from Japan, but it plays nothing. Not, like, you well, see, I, you get creators creating stuff in a, in a style of a, of a genre that was established. I mean, you got anime all the time made not in Japan, but it yeah, could, like you could have like an anime-based RPG that seems Japanese. Like you could have like I mean, the most. Look, look, look at Shadow of Light. That's Western made, and most people uh-huh. think of it like a JRPG almost. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So it just, it just depends on what style they were going for. But let's just be honest: the outfits that they're wearing in that game, Magna Carta Two and One. Oh man, you got some fine-looking ladies in Magna Carta Two. Yeah. II. Yes, indeed. He double D's all the way. Yo, man, I would that that Claire chick, man. I she's <laughs> <laughs> you fucking lingerie wearing hoe. Oh, dude, Sign, you guys remember the up. first Magna Carta poster? The first I remember one? the fucking. I remember. <laughs> I remember that. I sh- I could not tell if the main character was male or female in that dude, game. That, that was a running joke for the longest time. You <laughs> know, the main character was a guy or a girl. Oh my god! <laughs> it was until I heard his voice. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah, that's scary. So, oh, and by the way, yeah, no, Magna Carta Tears of Blood on PS2, fuck it. it sucks. Yeah, it Magna Carta, I mean, I played, okay, I actually played some more, well, I know kind of going off topic of the second game, but this does equate to the second game and why it's so much better. I'm kind of spoiling that part. But the first game did have some unredeeming qualities to its battle system. It was very slow. Eventually, I got used to how it played, and I enjoyed it. But I understand where Sword's coming from by it being, fuck this game, second one, let's move on. Because it doesn't, it's not memorable, and it is definitely very archaic in its design by feel modern like games now. Tears of Blood literally feels more like it's, like, work, not even, not even a not Yeah, it's like game. a game work in progress to the second one, where the second one feels like a game that was completed. Feels like a, feels like a job. Like, I feel like I'm, I'm actually, like, at work it, doing... It was like a chore to actually shit. play that game that when you play the combat. Right. But the story was was interesting in the first. Story one. is good. Story was good in Magna Carta: Tears of Blood. Yeah, but t- but the second game, oh man, second, second game so much better. Superior in literally every conceivable way. Yeah, it's it's, it's such a better game. It kind of just it's kind of disappointing though. Like you can't play it in any of the platform other than other than the think, 360. So, like Magna, we actually we mentioned this before. Minecraft 2 has actually some similarities to Infinite Discovery in yeah. terms of like the s- certain story beats and also some gameplay. Like it has the same a similar action combat system. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Uh, takes place, sort take, of. Takes sort place, of. Yeah, sort of. Like, but you it's like, like a, it's an action in like, a seamless world. You do like normal attacks, and then you build, you keep attacking, and then you do a special ability. And if you overcharge, you switch to another different character. Mm-hmm. Like the which only- was cool. The only thing similar is probably how it integrates its combat system within the overworld. Which is done, again, mm-hmm. better than Zestaria did. <laughs> but I thought that was interesting. And the way how you build up Khan was interesting because Khan was basically your NP meter in combat. And you basically build it up to build up these special attacks, which were really powerful. Which made the building up Khan part of 
feel interesting. And it was even more interesting when you were just playing as a caster, because you had to mm -hmm. uh, cast spells with certain abilities to build up some more environmental con for you to use, so that you can use some of the more the spell-based cons. And the spell-based cons were a lot more difficult to build up, but man, were they satisfying to use. I also just liked how everyone had two different, completely different fighting styles. Yeah, like Juto had... <clears throat> and each uh, had their own skill tree. Yeah, Juto had a one-handed sword one -handed skill One-handed sword, sword. two-handed sword. Two-handed sword skill tree. Uh, Celeste, I think that's where her, her name. She had like... Celestine, a, yeah. Yeah, Celestine. She had like a bow and a staff, I think. A bow she and She had like something. these two weird like yeah. rods. Yeah, two kind rods. Of? Yeah. I, yeah, I can't remember what the hell they were. And then, and then um, main heroine got like, no, she was the one with the staff. And then she had like, oh, uh, yeah, Zephy was. Zephy had mm -hmm. the staff and a fan. Mm -hmm. It was really interesting how they each had two different play styles, and for each playthrough, you had to commit to a style, to one skill tree basically, because you didn't have you, enough. You, you shouldn't really bounce back and forth yeah. because you're gonna be dis like unevenly distributing yeah. your skill points, and you're gonna but be limiting yourself. I, I think that was a good thing since it allowed for more replay value. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I would say, even though the con system as a meter was interesting, I'd probably say the team attacks in Magna Carta 2 felt too much work to feel worth it, especially with how... I, they... I, don't, I think I used it I think I think used a one time just to see what it looked like, yeah. and I never used it again. They're, they're, they're too much of a pain to set up. and uh, the, the requirements terms... are, like, too ridiculous. Yeah. And in terms of damage, uh, they weren't too worth it. It's, uh, you only really only use it if you want to look cool, basically. Pretty much. <laughs> but can I say how stylish this game looks with animation, especially when you build, get up to the higher tier attacks? Uh, mm -hmm. They look they they look really really good. Yeah, the special effect like it's actually a pretty gorgeous looking game yeah. overall, and the special attacks and the particle effects are like really beautiful. Yeah. Even though the color palette is a bit washed out, like. Four set earlier, I do think that the character models, the special effects, the animation was all on point. And uh, how good the special abilities look and how damaging they were w did make the combat to feel worth it, at least. Mm hmm. And, um,. <laughs> I I'd actually, I honestly really enjoyed the storyline of the game for the most part. I think it's a little slow to start, but once you get off the island, it's yeah. like actually starts to pick up. And then there's some pretty cool twists. Some I expected, some not. Some I really liked was that big reveal. I mean, we're not spoiling stuff here, right? We're just we're trying to keep it. Uh, yeah, I guess. Keep it low. Okay. There, all right. There's a, there's a twist at the very end of the game. And then it kind of causes like this moral dilemma and the characters are trying to they're basically trying to stop this recurring thing that's happening mm -hmm. but at the cost of something else that's really all like, i can say without spoiling it if they do it the whole society will basically change it basically like almost it almost collapsed yeah and then it kind of creates this moral dilemma because like i'm gonna be honest with you i think not all the players are really gonna necessarily agree with what they did yeah and i feel like they actually caused a lot of harm and then to a lot, very large degree so it's kind of like w did they really do the right thing i feel like it just kind of depends on on who you ask because I, I like i see where they were coming from from a moral standpoint but i also feel like they were kind of playing god and it really they really had no right to do what they did mm -hmm. aside from i i actually really like the cast for the most part i think the antagonists are kind of underdeveloped but i really like the main cast for the most part i think juto has a really good arc like yeah. especially once he like he starts to regain his memories, it kind of he starts to. Yeah, yeah it's um, also pretty funny how he corrects. Uh, what's that guy, the flame guy's name again? Oh, Corsell. I, I like how he corrects Corsell in one part. Mm -hmm. like, oh shit! Who shall you <laughs> now, bitch? Because Corsell's such a fucking like snot nosed punk a lot of the times, did you yeah. show? And then when he sh finally shows him up, he's like, ah. <laughs> but yeah, most of the characters I really like, at least in terms of the main cast. Uh, I think the problem that the antagonists is they're not really shown given much spotlight. Yeah, they're not particularly developed. Yeah. I will say that the main main villain, uh, Shuenzai, he has a cool backstory, yeah. which is really at the end of the game. But before that point, he's pretty standard. Yeah. I just love standard antagonist characters. Yeah. Okay. And uh, hey, man, hey, man, you got Claire as one of the villains. Fuck yeah. Yep. 
Yeah. At least she's hot. Fucking bad babe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I like the weapon enhancement system. That was pretty neat. You could add little gems to your weapon, kind of like Materia in Final Fantasy VII. Um, give them special ability stat buffs. Um, like, oh, increase con that when you attack more stuff, stuff like that. Cool system. Uh, yeah, that game, that game, that game overall was just pretty, pretty, pretty good. It was, it was just really fun. good. It was, it was good. It has a really game. has an interesting story, good cast, and pretty fun combat. The skill trees. Yeah. If there is one, if, bad, to, if there if is one, up, if there is one bad thing about the combat, it's probably the pace because it's pretty slow, really, mm -hmm. really slow. But especially like if you play one a two-handed sword for Juto, it's like yeah. unbearable. Yeah, I was gonna say there's one game though that I would ever go back and pl uh, plug up the Xbox 360 to yeah. play would be that. Yeah, but yeah. even though the combat's slow, I do like the combat system. I like how it emphasizes yeah. using multiple people just because of the overheat system. And I like the building up con part, especially the difference between physical con users and magic-based con users. That made combat really interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that sometimes, um, from like a presentation standpoint, it can like not, uh, falter sometimes because like, it uses the Unreal Engine. So have like... A lot of the terrain looks really flat, yeah. especially like the grass and the water, and then sometimes and like the trees look really bad, like they look like stick figures. I probably or say it does right have, uh, in terms of another aspect, it suffers. It uses like the visual novel aesthetic, kind of, with the character yeah. models talking and text. Boxes. I'm okay with the visual novel aesthetic. What I wasn't okay with it was washed out graphically. It can look at times browns and grays, or it doesn't have a lot of at times. I mean, like. The visual novel kind of style doesn't really bother me per se, but like the 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 few full motion cutscenes that it does have are so gorgeous that I really wouldn't mind having more of them. What do you guys thought of the music then? Um, solid. It I, it had some good tracks, but Sentinel the most track time, it wasn't Sentinel like track. it wasn't. Boss. It wasn't like the music to me s stuck out. It was kind of like it was good, and to the point I don't remember most of it. I, it always, you know what I mean? It always, like it always did its job. It was there. It yeah. set the tone nice. I did, however, like the main village theme though a lot. I don't know if you heard about the fucking dude Sentinel Sentinel soundtrack. Awesome. Yeah, that was good too. I would say compared to like Last Remnant and uh, Infinite Discovery, this it wouldn't. I wouldn't say it's as say good this, as them. Yeah, I mean, out of the games we've talked about, if I had to pick one that I would play again, it would be Magna Carta too. And it's not like terribly lengthy. It's like a good 25, 30 hour game, so it doesn't overstay its welcome. Yeah, but it doesn't felt, feel too short. I never felt it overstay its welcome. But I also feel like there was enough content in it to get my yeah. money's worth. Yeah, there was enough content that you could pop it in for a couple weekends and have it finished and go to another game. Yeah. Let's so talk... I think it's pretty much got everything. Yeah. Let's talk about Lost Odyssey now. Oh, oh, boy. Man. <laughs> oh yeah, that boy. game. That game where we ever get a battle and freaking shows. 20 most seconds probably. of like most, uh, most, backgrounds most, before you get to people, fight. Most people are probably gonna hate us now, but here most we go. Most people adore this game. They're like, oh I man, don't. guys, this is I this don't. is the real Final Fantasy this, 13. This, this, I can't I can't tell you how many times I've seen that. Wait, this is the real Final Fantasy 13? Yeah, that's what, that's they what people say. <laughs> that's what everybody says. But no, it is not. But it's turn based. It is not man. the real Final Fantasy 13. It's turn based, so it's good. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I can't. You're, 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 just, you're, just, you're just a, you're just a okay. casual. Like, I'm not trying. I'm not trying great. to demean people for liking the game, but whenever I hear compliments for its combat system, most people just say it's turn-based. He's like, I, and dude, you know the whole I thing. Can list, I can list so many flaws with the combat, like so many bad design well, choices. I have like, one. Oh, it's a, it's a I have one that I don't like. When you have to go and attack and you have to push as your prompt as you attack them, I mean, is it necessary? It just, it, it just it felt, it tries well, to rip off Legend of what is that game? Legend of. I mean, I don't even know the game Hearts, that rips off that. It's I don't like that. Like the ring meter. Yeah, I don't like yeah, that. Because like, if I like want to play, thing is, had a good, well, here, had a good feature, I'd play uh, Legend of Dragon. See, that's not even that though. It's, it's like the fact shadow, that well, there's yeah. a couple things. First of all, the ring system is made completely obsolete after a certain part of the game because they only apply to your normal attacks. Mm -hmm. That's it. I know, but it you're was gonna, You're going to you're gonna start but using, like... Dragoon, it, 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 it was it a was necessity. I mean, it's bad at in that, least. too, but at least it was more uh, 
Like, and on top of that, I just feel like I can never nail down the timing that much. Like I feel like I feel like I do it the same every time, and I can never get more than a good rating. I'm like, I do it perfect, and I'll do it the exact same way the second time, and I don't get the perfect. I'm like, what? Yeah, I don't know. It, it made no sense how you're supposed to nail a perfect rating, unless you upgrade it and make the area bigger. I can, I just can never seem to get the perfect rating, no matter how well I time it. Honestly, I gave up on that rating thing. I just left it alone. I didn't really care. I didn't really care. And, and on I'll... top of that, the other thing that makes this, the ring system obsolete is the fact that roughly half the entire party consists of mages who are never going to normal attack at all. So mm -hmm. why put in the rings on them anyway in the first place? Yeah. Yeah, it's true. It's pointless. They do like two points of damage. And then, and uh, I forgot the special abilities on uh, physical attackers have rings on them. I can't remember. Mm -hmm. They do? Okay. Yeah, that was actually that was the main point of it was yeah. that they add uh, abilities to your normal mm -hmm. attacks, but like it's only for your normal attacks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's I... the thing in RPGs you do when the enemy's about to die. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, if, a, if they're about to die in the game, just throw them into a oven. Like, from what I remember, the turn-based combat system, it wasn't bad. But it was pretty vanilla with the ring system added. And even though there's a positioning system, I know, like, it's pretty obvious who you're supposed to position. Your front attackers uh -huh. up front, your mages at back. It never really changes something, I think. I just, I didn't feel like it added that, like, that much yeah. to the game. I just feel like it was kind of just there, like, hey yeah, guys, look, in strategy. In characters around left them as they were, because, I mean, like, it didn't phase where they swore position they had to be at. Never bother me out of the like, way. Like, it never felt like uh, the game utilized the positioning system much. Like, uh, it was I there, felt but like. But it, it's like I you didn't need it. The, like, I think the Atelier games, uh, some of its turn based combat system, utilized a positioning system better than Lost Odyssey did. Heck, even Cross has used it better. Yeah. And the thing, too, that I take issue with is just the fact that, like, this really rarely ever works except with a few exceptions but i just don't like how the combat doesn't actually take place until you select all of your actions mm -hmm. so you can't predict like when a character is going to go when so it's oh, like yeah. if you toss a healing spell you'll never know when that character is going to heal and then plus they have the interruption oh, system where a mage I, I, will get hit i can't remember when they're does casting this, does this game th this game doesn't have a turn list does it you actually it does but not until after you select all of your actions. Oh, so yeah, what's useless, the then. point? It's, what's it's, the point of having it? It's it's it means nothing. That gate that that list means nothing after you select all your actions. I probably say this. There are two good points to Lost Odyssey for me. The music, except for the final boss theme, probably, and the sh the short stories. The short stories are really good. They basically, they're mostly put in the perspective of Kaim, the main character, but there are some with other perspectives. And I've, each of these short, short stories are emotionally charged. They basically tell the story of this immortal who's basically traveled around the world, telling you the story of the many hardships, heartaches, and adventures he's been through throughout the ages. And these are the most interesting part of Kaim, really, because... Main story time is pretty dull because, surprise, he has amnesia. So all that <laughs> wor so all that worldly experience, his experience with Fendi short stories doesn't mean jack shit until he gains them back. The thing the sad, is, it's the like the sad part can, about all that whole amnesia stuff. Well, the thing is, like, you can tell it's so obvious that the main story and the things are written by different people. Yeah, it's like night. And day. Yeah, the short stories, they're beautiful written, they're mostly charged, they're interesting, the scenarios is just heartbreaking sometimes, or like really nerve-wracking in, uh, in others. Like I still remember the Hana, the Hana short stories, uh, the one where he's in a prison. I can remember a lot of the short stories in Lost Odyssey, but I can't remember the main story in Lost Odyssey at all. What like, other thing, just, thing is? It's literally just stop. The bad guy, yeah. from start to finish, stop the bad guy. It, it, that's all it is. You're just chasing down the bad guy. You get into the bad guy, and that's it. You know what that also reminded me of? Uh, it reminded me of Eternal Sonata because it does something similar with the whole like backstory thing. Except obviously this has a lot to do with the character being amnesia. The other one was not amnesia. This was, but 
you don't really see very many GRPGs do that sort of like backstory thing very often. Very often, very seldom you do. Um, see, like, I would say I like the setting and the style of the game, like the whole like that beginning battle you get into at first. I mean, I the, thought oh, it started. The first scene, the first scene is like the most memorable part yeah. of the main story. That, yeah, that's it's, cool. it's, it's that, like that, it's, it really... that battle transition from the opening to the first bat tutorial battle is really cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, you you you, you got to give credit where it's due. I mean, they they definitely give you a good introduction to one of you. Like, oh man, this game looks gonna be awesome, and then and then after that, the game gets slow. And yeah, and, and the thing too is like, I I feel like the cast of characters is like all the characters are mostly just ripped right out of other Final Fantasy. But like, yeah, yes, yes, I know Sakaguchi made it. Yeah, it's not an excuse to just copy and paste old Final Fantasy characters and reskin them and then put them at, in this. At least he tried to make something different and unique. I mean, I mean, I'm not saying like when I say I didn't like the game, I wouldn't say I didn't like it. I would say it's a game I would never go back to because I didn't have that much fun with it. Like it the was game has average to below. The game average. has a fucking Sid in it, like the Final Fantasy VII Sid, like verbatim. Oh, I guess the yeah. same yeah. fucking character. Yeah. We talk yeah, about like, no differences. Yeah, you're talking about the old man, right? Yeah, he's like what 99.9 percent .9 identical to this Final Fantasy yeah. VII. You literally just change every word in an added Sid for his name; it would fit perfectly. Mm -hmm. And and uh, fucking Cook and Mac, oh, fuck them to hell. Oh my god! Okay, they're not as bad. They're not as bad as the Infant Undiscovery twins, but like, they suck. <laughs> they still suck. You know, say, you gotta have twins that annoy the hell out of you. I probably say the only touching scene that you have with Cook and Mac doesn't even involve Cook and Mac. It revolves around their mother reuniting with yeah. with Kai, who turns in fact their grandfather. I think. <laughs> So yeah. Yeah. He, mm -hmm. But I probably even more I, 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 about I, the whole I thing. probably add this that the reunion with Kaim and his daughter is another good thing in the game. I think the game did pretty well. That was really that was really touching. Yeah. <clears throat> like I don't think that the main story is bad, and I do think it has its moments, but it's just like, like been there, done when, that when, RPG. When, when you compare the short stories to the main story. It feels like a letdown, an absolute letdown. Mm -hmm. Like oh, oh I, I, I want to say, well, Seth, best character. Oh, okay. That's yeah, cool. <laughs> he's, he's, he's in cool. From what I remember. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's like, I, but it's just like the writing quality from the short stories to the main story was the most wrong thing for me, because I said whenever, before, it's literally like night yeah. and day. Yeah, whenever I read any of the short stories, I was totally invested. I was totally reading through, getting invested in the story, feeling emotions and all that. And then the main story is like, yada yada. Like vanilla. Yeah. And like, I don't know, I just, like, I, I really like it when games have like antagonists that are like fleshed down, have their own. This guy is literal like fucking mustache twirler. Like, like no backstory, no motivation, other like... Uh there you want to take so... over the world? Why? Why do you want to take over the world? You gotta give me something. Like, like even going back, like as my, I, I criticized Magnin Car the antagonist being underdeveloped, but at least he had a cool backstory revealed at the end of the game, and to the point where, like, is he really a bad guy? You know, this is just like I gotta stop him. Let's see, anything else we should add for Lost Odyssey? Um, it's okay. It's oh, fine. I, I remember. Like, uh, the way you learn abilities uh, in a game as an immortal was pretty annoying, I think. I, I like the idea that, like, the immortals are more customizable, yeah. whereas the mortals are kind of just, like, they develop as they go. But even then, it's like, there's not that much freedom, at least compared to, like, Blue Dragon, yeah. where, like, for example, your immortal mages yeah. are always going to be mages. You cannot make yeah. them warriors. Yeah. You cannot, and you like, cannot make your warriors any, tanks. There's, no, there's not even a point in learning, like, uh, these extra abilities if it goes against the archetype that the character is trying to go for gameplay-wise. Like, like, for example, I, I, like, I'm one who always likes to try to put healing abilities on every character that I can, but, like, for example, if you put uh, magic on Kaim, whether it's black magic or white magic, he's a terrible mage. Like, his casting time is so slow and his magic yeah. stat is so low. Like, I'm not going to put it on him, even though I have that option. Yeah, like, 
having the option is nice, but it doesn't mean jack shit if the character's not built for it. Uh-huh. I, I already have a... I haven't played that game in so long. I Now that you guys bring them up, it never really bothered me. I never really had any complaints with the game. I think the game, I think more or less I just was like, it's all right. Here's like something super duper nitpicky, and oh, we didn't have talking, a PS1 Are you talking disc. about random encounters, man? Well, well hey, hear, hear me out. Hear me out. Blue Dragon, also developed by the same company, use like actually a really clever encounter system where not only can you see the enemies, you also have that like little encounter ring. Where you can actually like group enemies together and sometimes you actually have the monsters kill each other like it's really cool and the lost odyssey random encounters like okay <laughs> cool <laughs> oh god you know there's a part in the game where you always oh, there's a level you're on top of this it. fucking mountain you're on top of this mountain and the wind is blowing really strong and these enemies and they're in and the encounter rate is so high and i'm trying to get to the other spot i'm like dude i can't i can't i i don't have any items to fucking heal and I, i'm I, trying to get over I, this I, fucking I, mountain while this wind Oh my god. I just rubbered. Yeah. I just rubbered. This game has level scaling, it. doesn't it? Yes, it does. No, no, no. It's like... <clears throat> How does it work? Okay, yeah. So, you'll get to an area. Yeah, yeah. And then... Okay, so... You'll get to a new dungeon. And then for like... You'll, you'll notice that after every single battle, your characters will level up 100% of the time after a battle. Mm -hmm. And after like five or six levels, from that point forward in that dungeon, they only get one point of experience. So it's like yeah. battles become worthless, except for skill points. But even then, it just feels like it's yeah, not it's that like, worth like, it. Was, there's like, I don't understand why there's like the encounter uh, rate so high. Why was it so high? Just like, level, just like a level cap, sort of. Yeah, you know, it's obviously. like, it just, I feel like it makes grind, it literally makes grinding impossible. You can't grind yeah. after a certain point. I'll probably say, but yeah, like, I, I, I gotta say, I, I, <clears throat> I'm gonna be honest, man. Now we're, now we're talking about these games. You know, other than Magna Carta 2 so far, I have no reason to ever want to play them again. I feel like, oddly enough, Lost Odyssey's gameplay feels like a down downgrade from Blue Dragon. Yes! Wait, yeah, really? the Blue Dragon's combat is standard, but, like, it's a lot more functional because it doesn't have, like, the whole thing where you, you don't take action until everyone is selected. Yeah. Whereas Blue Dragon, you take actions immediately so you can uh, plan your strategy more. And there's more customizability for the, all the characters. I mean, I didn't like how in Blue Dragon everyone was a blank slate where anyone can just be anything. I, I wish there was more um, kind of like personal skills to the characters. Whereas in Lost Odyssey, all the characters, or at least the Immortals, are locked into a certain class. And even though you can teach them abilities, you're still limited to what you can really use. So essentially, they did do improvements when they made Blue Dragon. Yeah, well, and it's well the other way around. I feel like Blue Dragon actually mostly has a better gameplay. Wait, no, but I mean, which game came out? Which game came out first? Blue Dragon come out after Lost Odyssey? No, 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 no. Blue Dragon came first. Oh, Blue Dragon oh, wait, was. Oh, you fucking kidding me? Blue Dragon was uh, Miss Walker's first game, as far as I know, and then Lost Odyssey came after. Oh my god, I thought it was Lost Odyssey first and Blue Dragon. Nope. No. Mm -mm. Compared to Blue Dragon, I mean, I think Lost Odyssey's even though as 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 standard as Lost Odyssey's main story was, it was at least better than Blue Dragon. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so basically, both games had a hit or miss in in both regard, I guess. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't, I, out people, I wouldn't play I out of one of them again. People love them. I, I, people love the games, and ever, I won't break them for it, but I, I just found Lost Odyssey boring. Like, I tried to play the game like three or four times, and I always It took me like stopped. five times to beat it. I, I stopped at I don't like three. Lost Odyssey anymore like i wouldn't touch it again blue dragon i wouldn't touch with a 40 foot pole uh if it had discovery no last remnant maybe because i have it on pc but uh magna carta 2 is the only one out of the bunch i could so go far, I could see like, myself playing we, it again we had like one hit out of like what five <laughs> that's not good though <laughs> and it just shows a lot about the xbox for them scoring all these xbox exclusive jrpgs and now the, and none of them to be like a hit I mean, this is for show this is kind of showing in this discussion why I kind of feel like they only did it just to get the additional audience that Sony lost, but it backfired on them because you can tell just for the quality of the JRPGs that that it just didn't seem like the Japanese developers wanted to push these games on her anyway. It's like they knew they wanted these games to come out for it, but I also felt like they didn't really know if it was going to do well. They weren't. It, I feel like the effort for them trying. I don't know if it just wasn't there, 
or if it's new hardware and they were like still trying to figure it out but i don't know man uh yeah. let's talk about the time exclusives then uh let's start with star ocean 4 the last hope oh uh, why do we gotta why do we gotta talk about this uh, it's okay okay i will say Ish. one thing i will say one thing about it first I'm glad that when it came out for PS3, they used anime pictures, not those realistic oh, ones. Oh god, yeah, the CG ones were horrible. Yeah, I would say that. I don't know much about the differences. So I can't say I remember much about it, because I played it on PS3, wait, wait, sadly. Wait, 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 um, wait. As far there's, there's as one far difference. my memory goes. There's one difference that people dual might audio. like the PS3. Yeah, dual audio. Dual you audio. don't get to hear the English dumb. <laughs> oh, oh shit. well that's good because like i said let, I me, let, me, let, me, let me let me let me say this let me say this let me say this star ocean 4 has a great cast of voice actors but the voice directing in this game is shit horrible dude when you got fucking like matt mercer and laura bailey in the lead roles and you make them sound like shit you done fucked up what if they told me it sound like that i don't know but the voice directing this game is not it's, it's just god awful because it's like, well, yeah, you, say, if you go, meant it to be that way. If you go on, like, if you look at the cast list on, like, Wikipedia or something, you're like, damn, man, you got a star studded cast here. And then it's like, it sounds like amateurish. And even that's generous. Yeah, but what it, if they intentionally script. meant to the be that way? Well, the, guys? the script feels the script so, is awkward. so bad. So it feels so awkward, disjointed. Well, look, let's put it this way. At least you got the, the, the Japanese original audio for ps3 version so that it, that immediately makes the xbox uh, version just and terrible thing, i'd probably say presentation wise the environment looks good the character models they're the more they're the ultimate uncanny va valley oh Fine. my yeah the two they look they're so creepy looking like like just like they these like lifeless dolls, dolls. they like like limo, like, like limo, limo is probably limo the worst looks, example she's limo the worst like example. looks into your soul yeah. and she's like the devil you know I will say I, I, this. I, I probably say the male characters actually look pretty decent. Yeah, it's, it's the female. Like Aramat, I like Aramat's design. Yeah, it's the, it's the yeah. female characters that make it look like they're looking into your soul. Guys, <laughs> you guys talking hey about man. this? Hey man, hey man, Muria. Yeah. You gotta love Muria's design. Yeah. Talking about this, talking about this right now makes you want to play the fifth game. No. No way. No, you don't. No, want you to do don't. That. You don't want to do that. No. no, you know why I want to. You know why I want to. I want to hear that Valkyrie Profile 2 thing, battle thing. Hey man, you can listen to it on YouTube and your time will be better spent. <laughs> I know. I just like, love it though. I was... I'm going to say this right now. Though, even... I'm going to say this right now. Yeah. Starship 5. Worst Trias game. Right. Period. Really? <laughs> yes. Even more worse than uh, Exist Archive? I, I haven't touched that. That Probably is a kind than. of like a... a off topic here for one second but if you ever want a good spinoff for like a valkyrie profile game exist archive is your best bet oh yeah that was basically a pr that's basically a whole valkyrie profile game all but in like uh name and mm -hmm. uh, and setting yeah it's actually a valkyrie profile game in setting but the name is not the same okay. yeah um uh, but i was gonna say so with star ocean 4 the, the combat the, you know the, combat, the combat was good the combat yeah well, i was gonna say was good yeah i was gonna say though the combat about well one of the things in the combat that i liked about that game was the whole sidestepping mechanic yeah, you know where blind, you go around and you attack enemies, from behind blind sliding enemies was really cool when i figured out how to use that move in that game i love i love the combat in that game afterwards i, I had a I had a blast playing that game because at first i was like eh it seems kind of boring but then when I when I figured out when I actually figured out how to play it, yeah, I, I liked it. Yeah, the blind side mechanic was interesting moving mechanic and the overall combat mechanic mm -hmm. was pretty good, I think. Yeah, yeah. Um, I didn't like how you had like capacity points to how many special attacks you could equip because I feel like it kind of limits yeah. your combos. Like like with Edge, I can only equip like like three abilities that I want to use even though I had more that I thought would be good for my combo, but I couldn't because I had limited capacity. So that was kind of lame. But like, uh, like Star Ocean 4 is such a weird game because it has like so many good things, but like everything I has like just as many bad things. Like, <clears throat> the combat's good, the writing is shit. And, and you know what's weird? What, what The other thing too is like, okay, so Star Ocean 4's overarching story 
yeah. is actually pretty good. It's the way that it's told that shit. That's what ruins it. Like, it, it's like so. It's a prequel to the whole series, and it's like, oh, so like World War Three devastated Earth, and then they got a special and, team yeah. of, of people to going, to they're going out exploring worlds just to find suitable replacement to to, to, for to Earth. colonize a new yeah, a new planet. A new Earth. I mean, it's Which, so generic. It's so generic. Like, it's like, 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 no, no. I think the premise is really yeah. cool, but and like, I do like. Here's I mean, the problem. Didn't they use that premise before in like other games? I mean, uh, maybe like Star Ocean Three similar. No, no Star Ocean Three. Star Ocean Three in the ending. Like, well, no, we all know about the ending. We, we know about that. I'm just saying, but wasn't like the idea of like you go out and explore? No, I don't no, know, not Star Ocean no. Three. So Star Ocean mm -hmm. Three started you as a civilian, didn't it? Yeah, you start off on a. You're you're playing like a normal yeah. kid. You're on a. On a resort plan, it gets attacked. You fly. You get into an escape no. pod. You fly away. You crash land, and blah blah yeah. blah blah. But it, it, it has nothing to do with like. It, a... In Star Ocean Four, you basically start out as like an official staff, just trying to find suitable planets to colonize. And I do like how there's an event in the game that makes you question how much interference that main characters should do, because mm -hmm. his uh, his interference of in one planet <laughs> didn't go so well. See, oh man, that that's something that I think the game, as as bad and and flawed as the writing is, that's yeah. actually something I think the game did right. Was that that little arc? And, and this is something that like really frustrates me about like the players. Yeah. Is like uh, I'm not gonna say what happens, but like the main character Edge like goes into like this deep depression, and I feel Just, like yeah. anyone who's not yeah. a total sociopath would at least have even half of that reaction. Yeah. Like you gotta be one heartless soulless motherfucker to just be like eh, eh no, all right, whatever i do i do think people are a bit too callous in terms of saying oh edge is just a giant baby especially since it involves an alternate version of his home and what happened to it yeah they they call him baby cry baby emo i'm like like come on man put yourself in his shoes but i will say that the directing the directing in that breakdown was it the best pretty be pretty bad yes pretty bad so. like and, and okay so and, and the cast is not not particularly okay there's a few good characters i like a couple of them edge is okay edge is fine and his his friend Raimi is also okay armat is okay phase is okay but it's mostly limel miracle and sarah they oh my god suck. Sa sarah Sarah's the worst. Beyond, I think. Sarah, Sarah goes beyond just being an airhead. She's, she's like she's flat out she's just brain dead. She's like she's just brain dead. She's like <laughs> she's just brain dead. <laughs> and I said her voice is tall. So, oh my god, this uh, the way I talk. She's like like, like she's a chipmunk on helium. She's still in both languages. In both languages. Oh tracks, god, don't do that. Like that. Yes, she's, she's, she's she's the most <laughs> brain dead character I've seen. <laughs> not, 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 not only in JRPGs, but in anime, in the anime too. I can't think. Of... <laughs> you know, look, that's, look, that, I, I that know we... doesn't leave a lot of impression on. Really I know, doesn't. I know, we haven't gotten to it yet, so I don't want to jump the gun too much. But as stupid as the main character of Enchanted Arms is, yeah. like he, he looks like fucking Einstein compared to Sarah. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. And Atsuma doesn't even know what a ladder is, and Sarah still more stupid why would they put that in the game where someone doesn't know what a ladder is was that even necessary it, it was just a, yeah it's just a tutorial to a tutorial well, I know that, but if they yeah. could have went about it a different way, it's like, oh what, what you that? do with a ladder oh you push this to go up a ladder i'm like Ugh. and then and then after it's like hey do you want to hear that again i'm like no i don't want to hear how stupid you are how stupid i am that's literally how i would put it but like like okay start in terms of the writing starship 4 has a great premise really great ideas a couple of okay characters and, and it does have a couple of genuinely memorable moments here and there and like, i'll add in like i typically like, do with every game we've talked about so far music wise i thought it was rocking. okay yeah it's rocking yeah it's definitely one of my toy soccer was better i i better said work. this before in a video but in terms of star ocean my toy soccer is like on his a game yeah like his tails tracks like mostly oh, suck yeah. But Star Ocean is like. I would ass. say this though. It feels I would bad. say this though. Star Ocean one bad, and two will always be. It feels just, bad to uh, see they tales. seem like better games. Yeah. It feels so bad to see Tails being treated this way by Sakura. Uh, 
Uh, but doesn't isn't, isn't it the reason why the music doesn't go that well? Because they want a, they want a certain they, type they of style. They want to stick to a tells. certain style to make it right, and so that, that, really that limits his back. creativity. And, and because when you let him let loose with, like, not just Star Ocean, but like like the Bat and Kaido soundtracks are like like phenomenal. And, oh and, god, and that that freaking Bat and Kaido's. You listen to those thing? soundtracks, oh. and it's hey, like, hey guys, you know what's the most funny part about this? Mm. You know it's the only Tales game that has good, that has like fantastic music. Tales of Legendia. <laughs> Tales of Legendia. And Dude, I, hey, hey, I love Legendia's music now. Love it. I I, I just think yes. that's funny how the two Tales game that has the most polarizing gameplay has the best soundtrack in the series. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. They, like, yeah it's kind of oh my god. The understand. temple music. The temple music in Zestiria. Oh my god. Oh, All the temples. Yeah. All the temples. Is great. I love. See, why don't they have more vocal tracks like that in like a more see, Tales games? Wait, wait, wait. It, it made the water temple yeah. somewhat tolerable. What are you complaining? Don't about even you? get me started on a water temple. Where, where are I'm scared. Of the water what are you too. complaining about the vocal tracks in Blue Dragon just now, man? I was complaining about them, yes, but I'm not complaining about them now because they're amazing. There's yeah. there's good vocal tracks in the, like like Persona. Persona has awesome. Yeah. Tracks. yeah see, it's all about the creativity I mean, of Persona the vocal tracks. Persona basically only course, have battle vocal now, tracks. Now, of course, we do have to mention this. Persona 5 Royal, guys. Pick it up. Don't forget that game. Oh, wait. Uh, we're what else about is there to say about Ocean? I, I also like how this is like the only Star Ocean game where you can actually like go to different planets oh, at will. Yeah. Like, you're, like you're actually the captain of a ship and you can go to different planets. Like yeah. every other Star Ocean game, you're stuck on a fucking backwater planet and the sci-fi element feels more like of a like a gimmick in the, in the story, like a storytelling device. Whereas in Star Ocean 4, it actually feels like I'm exploring the galaxy. You know, that was actually kind of interesting. Why is that? I always felt like, oh, we're going to these cool places. But yet, we go to this planet that's like, okay. Like in Star Ocean um, 3, you're stuck on a medieval planet for like 80% of the game. And, <laughs> yep. and the sci-fi is like like swept under the rug. And, and that's the that exactly? of Star Ocean. Even in Star Ocean 5 is the same way. Star Ocean 5 is like... Star Ocean 5 is more of like a first contact kind of thing. But... It's still just really box standard fantasy RPG, and then sometimes you'll go to like a lab, like a abandoned lab with high tech in it, and that's that's about thank, it. That's all you ever get. Thank God, man, they only make one Star Ocean game every generation. Like so, if anything, like I think that was some Star Ocean Four really had going. Star Ocean Four is not a bad game. It's yeah, got a for lot the of ports. Xbox though, since we are since since mentioning this, I would say this is kind of where what killed. Any JRPGs going forward with the multi like, time exclusive thing, because once the versions came out that were better, particularly with Eternal Sonata had a similar thing where it had original Xbox release, and then this game here, when he added the whole dual voice track and then the anime style uh, option, I mean it was no point going back to the Xbox version. The Xbox version performed just as similar to the PS3 version. They, they, there was no performance issues there. So if you, if you just had to save on a budget or the time, even if like spending the money, you weren't really missing anything. But if you definitely wanted the, the Japanese audio, then it was no, it was a no brainer to get the PS3 version. I mean, it just made sense. I think at the end of the day, the best way to describe it is, Sorcian Four has a good story, but very, very mishandled, very mishandled. But it did uh, have a lot of faith uh, in it. Mostly, yeah. Sh yeah. Mostly shitty cast with a couple of good ones and a pretty rocking combat system. I would I guess say let's talk about integrity. Eternal Sonata, man. Eternal yeah. Sonata. The the visuals, like it's just beautiful in that game. I think. Oh yeah. Uh, the music, great. Story. That's a, that's another that's another Matori Sakuraba track yeah. soundtrack that was like excellent. Story and characters, eh? Yeah, take it to leave it. The. I probably say the most funny part about the story character is that Eternal Sonata probably has the longest death scene I've seen ever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, know what I know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. you just, it just goes <laughs> like just, just fucking die, die already. Fucking hey, you know what? That it. death scene had a lot of impact. Don't you guys talk? Yeah. Hey, I know it, it took like it, 25 minutes for the person oh, to die. Uh, <laughs> feel? And why are we jumping so far into the game? <laughs> I mean, let them figure that little death out for the, you know, for themselves, guys. And I, I think the combat is pretty cool, especially how it evolves like throughout the course. I of love the game. how it evolves over time. Each chapter they add more like 
I do think it's interesting how your moveset changes if you're in shadow or in light. But here's what's cool. This this is a, this is something very important that we have to before we forget. The 360 version of Eternal Sonata was dirt easy because you literally had items that you picked up that you could use depending on if you were in a shadow or light area. I never once used any of those items. I literally just breezed through the whole game, never having to use a single item the entire time. Until I played the PS3 oh, version. Yeah, that's the most funny part. Yeah, I remember the I remember the PS3 version being a lot. Yeah, the Dude, PS3 it's so hard. I got to that guy like, on the bridge and I can't get past him. If, if, Literally uh, to this day. If you, I still if, have not passed that guy. If you don't know how to block, you're not gonna play the game. Basically. <laughs> yeah, you have to block you you didn't have to do that in the three sixty version. Blocking wasn't was not important. But then but the PS3 version is like you didn't learn how to block? <laughs> yeah, you should. Uh, I mean, I feel like there's kind of not, like, in terms of the story, I feel like those writers you, were smoking some fear yeah, that thing. Well, actually, thing. it was based on Fer Frederick Chopin's yeah. yeah. memory. It, it, it wasn't it, it, like a manic like, thing. How the games were was basically a dream. And yeah, no, it, that, that was real. Like, you know he actually you know, you know what's pretty funny, too? And how the characters just believe Chopin? Yeah, they just... Just, just this is my dream world. Like, really? Oh, oh, it's like, hey, I created this world. You guys are here. I can, I can take what happened. Oh, oh it's okay, like, cool. Let's go on adventure. Oh, oh, you're basically God. Oh, huh. yeah. Cool. Okay, well, if you're God, okay, okay, how can okay. we even have to fight okay. God at the end? The only one that, like, uh, believes, it, like, at the start was, like, Puka, but it's pretty, pretty. See, the thing is, okay, what I don't understand is if he creates this whole world in his dream, why do you have to fight him for? Like, I, I couldn't figure that one out. But see, doesn't that mean that if you kill him in his world, doesn't that mean he... In, in, does he die in the real world, though? He, he was already dying. He was in, like, uh... But I mean, doesn't that equate in his to him bed. dying, yeah. is what I'm saying. Essentially. Because as long as he was in that real world, he was technically alive. So I guess in his own way, he wanted to die, right? I guess. Yeah, I mean, I if you think about it. Okay, what do you I guys think... think about the whole segments of like when it talked about Chopin in the real world? Like, it, it his, his, his... neat. I mean, they feel like kind of like shoehorned a little bit because they just kind of like pop up, but it's like they're, they're kind of neat and educational. Interesting. I felt like it was an educational game because I mean, if you want to learn more about Frederick Chopin, they had those really cool yeah. moments. I mean, that I thought was, was impressive, and the music was just beautiful. The whole soundtrack is gorgeous in that game. Out of all the games we discussed, is that the Eternal Sonata is one of my favorite games music wise that i've ever listened to or any jrpg <clears throat> i'd probably say coming back to combat that it's a pretty interesting mix of turn based and real time it actually mm -hmm. reminds me most of arc the land probably of the spirits kind of of how yeah uh, you have like each a character turn and then when it's the character turn you got like a certain amount of actions and distance you can make based on the character's time gauge which was interesting yeah, like it starts off basically turn based, yeah. then it becomes like borderline real time, yeah. almost. You're still taking turns, but you're moving about in real time and acting in real yeah. time. Uh, I think, um, so this was kind of nitpicky of me, but I just don't like how there's not really much customization for the characters. It's just kind of like you're just kind of handed everything as you go. The only yeah. thing that you can really customize is your equipment. Yeah. So it can't felt a little underwhelming, kind of linear. I probably say that the Archer Girl is probably the most powerful character in game gameplay wise. Oh uh, yeah, Viola. Yeah, she yeah. was crazy OP. Just, just keep, just get, just keep shooting them the bull, man. Just keep <laughs> shooting them. Be like and uh, I forgot his name was. Viola? There was yeah, there was that guy with the humongous sword too. He yeah. was pretty strong. It like a like a Sephiroth sword. Mm -hmm. I, I feel like it's weird. I just feel like I don't really have much to say other than that. It's yeah. just kind of a. Pretty straightforward RPG. Like, if you, I, I really don't if, know if, what to say. Eternal Sonata really. Yeah. It's like the. It's yeah. like really kind of unremarkable when you sit it's, down it's, and dissect it. It's there's nothing really going for the characters. Remember, the music was good. The the whole um, like sections where you talk about history of Frigate Chopin was. Eh, I'd probably say that whatever, if this game, but, if this game didn't take place in the Dream World, it just seemed like a typical JRPG. Yeah. With I don't them, know. I, just, with them having I to never take thought down, about it. I, with them having to take yeah, I never. Down the monarch, the evil mm -hmm. monarch. I, I just feel like I, I never really sat down and analyzed it. 
much until now, but I feel like I just don't have really anything else to say. <laughs> I guess the final game is uh, Enchanted Arms. That, and then we also got Tales of Vesperia. Oh yeah, Tales of Vesperia. <laughs> we'll, we'll save that for last. Yeah, save that for last. Enchanted Arms! Uh, pretty good. Yeah, not, I like not, the not game. Amazing. I thought it was fun. Okay, it's fine. Yeah. It's pretty good. Solid. I saw, it's funny though because, yeah, Atsuma is borderline retarded. He, he's bored. He, he's not brain dead like Sarah from Starship Four, but he's pretty bad. Yeah. But he um okay now I haven't played this game in many many years. Um, going off of memory, he actually does mature quite a bit. He actually becomes a pretty capable character later in the game. He starts to, he does grow. I think he does mature. Uh, so he starts off pretty insufferable, but I think it gets better. There was two differences between both the PS3 version of Enchanters and the 360 version. One I had the, the PS3 ability version to. Had more Hold on, let me let me read the back of my case because the difference I believe was one of them had the ability uh, the ability to uh, dance thing segment in the game, and one didn't have. It. I remember correctly. I believe the PS3 version actually didn't have a dancing segment. No, the 360 version didn't have that. The PS3 version did. Oh yeah, saw puzzles and unleashed attacks using the six axis. Uh, I'll probably say the combat system probably had a better positioning system than Lost Odyssey did. Yeah, the grid system was pretty good. Yeah. You know, I thought the combat was fun. I never thought the game was boring in that sense, but I did. I did notice the game used a lot. Reused a lot of NPCs for the same area. Yeah. Like, it didn't have yeah, a, like pilot swaps. Like, yeah, I don't, I didn't I don't like remember that. much of the combat, but I do remember liking it. Yeah, I, I think, like the game. I think one of the coolest parts of the game, despite it not being handled that well, is I really, really loved the golems. I think they were designed so cool. They were, but the problem is that you can't customize them at all, mm -hmm. and you're just not going to use them. You're going to use the four human characters. You can't change their skills. You can't learn new skills. They're just kind of like meat shields. Yeah, they're that's cool true. to look at. They're cool to look at, uh, but you're never gonna use them. There's literally no point in using them. You know, thinking about uh, thinking about this game, that's actually another game I want to go like, play against in Channel Arms because the last time I touched that game was during the launch of the 360. That was God a long time ago. Yeah, uh -huh. I never really played the PSG version all the way through because I mean, at the time I think it was other games coming out. I was just like, yeah, like I'm Enchanted surprised. Arms. I'm surprised this huh? game even had like a, a re-release. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you're talking about being re-released for the PS3? Yeah. Yeah, I'm kind of surprised by that too. Yeah. But to be honest though, uh, I, I think, you know, who actually published it? You know, Ubisoft, man. Ubisoft, they'll publish everything and re republish it again. So that doesn't surprise me too much. Oh, yeah. Enchanted Arms? Huh? Not that memorable of a game, but not that memorable. Decent. Not terrible. It was it's all right. Decent. Yeah, it was um, one of those games. I, I just I don't remember the story much because it's like I said, it's been like almost I just, ten years I, since this I is played what, it. This is what I just remember. J huh. Say you gotta save a uh, blue man, man, blue blue hair guy, because he's our best friend, yo. <laughs> Power and oh friendship. yeah, oh, the man. blue hair guy. Yeah. Power of friendship. Save him from the thought. <laughs> save him from the thought. That is the ice queen. Yeah, the, like queen. the, the person the with, the, with the with the bluish purple Dude, lipstick person. If I was, if I was, oh yeah, yeah, his name was Toya. That's what his name was. If I was Toya, I would never leave her side. You know, I'm looking at it now, man, and I'm 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 reading what it says on the back, and I want to think it says epic scale storytelling by Hardcore Game Magazine. Yeah, sure. See, I just sure I had an epic so scale. Tour. Yeah. I just don't remember much of what happens. I really wish I had. It's been a long time, man. Like, it's one of the things. That game, I don't remember much about the story. I didn't remember. I, I like, remember having some fun with it. Was it like, like you start in the game, like you're in a carnival or something? Like you going around yeah, you, and talk oh, yeah. to so town? You start, and, off, you start for like school. Yeah, this is school. And then like there's like a festival. Like, yeah, school, school festival. festival yeah, school yeah. festival. And then you're trying to ditch class and then and shit goes down there. And then yeah. Go into this restricted area. And then I think Atsuma awakens the Ice Queen or something. Yeah, that yeah, they, ice cream they go person. to like they go to like some hidden facility in the yeah. basement or something of the school, when the ice queen is sealed away, and then he accidentally awakens her. Yeah, yeah like like, like I, mean, I remember that much of the game because like that's like the beginning part. You anyone more, should remember that much, but I, I I I was having fun with the game. 
I remember, like, again, this is going off my middle school self. I remember liking the story for the most part, but I just, like, as of now, I can't really tell you what happens. I just don't remember. Yeah, it's really one of those games you have to go back and play it again to I think it's just play the game long. again to remember I think it's much. Just been too long since. Yeah, it I, yeah, it's not even a matter of like the game is bad or forgettable. It's just yeah. it seems like none of us have played it in a really long time. Was it like twenty years ago, right? No, it, like, it, like like ten. It came out two thousand seven. So yeah, thirteen years ago. Holy fuck. Oh my god. Uh, and I really haven't played it since then. Damn. Yeah, I just I wish I had say but i don't i don't remember i just remember i remember liking it i remember having some fun with it it's it'd be one of those games if i were to go back to play it again i could so this would be on my list of yeah i could see myself playing um enchanted arms again along with magna carta 2 and the other games not so much i'd, I'd have to i'd have to give it another playthrough so i can give my final thoughts because i don't remember anything i tell you there's one game that we didn't forget about one oh, that wait, we could wait, ever wait. play over and over again wait, 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 and never get bored of it oh, wait, wait. At least you guys would. Me, I just haven't finished it. And that's uh, Vesperia. Wait, uh, uh, before we move on, you know who's the best character in Chanted Arms? Oh. Don't, don't. I know oh, you're going to oh, say oh, The gay character? Makoto. I knew you was going to say, <laughs> knew was gonna say that. <laughs> oh, my God. Why that character, though? What was wrong with the other ones? Because he's so he's fucking he's over the only, top. He's like one of the memorable parts of the game of how... I mean, yeah, he was, but does he have to have credit in everything? I mean, I can't remember the other characters, man. <laughs> Let's just say he was special, okay? Yeah. And it, it's pretty funny how he he disguises himself as being the most macho man you ever think. <laughs> yeah. And then when he reveals himself, he goes back to his normal self. In the same outfit, like the big, like the badass yeah. he wears. Yeah. And was, no, so was that, being is mocked, not, that is not a fucking plot twist. I knew, I was like, oh, it's Makoto. He's it's back. Okay. Yeah. Don't call him Mystery Man. He's fucking Makoto. Yeah. Everyone yeah. knew it from the get go. Okay. It's not a plot twist. You know what? All. The game tried to make it look like it was. That's what I'm saying, but it's not. <laughs> So, uh, let's talk Welcome about ladder. what is perhaps the best 360 JRPG. Tales of Vesperia. Vesperia. This is the one game everybody flipped their shit over who had a PS3 and was like, is this game coming to Xbox? Oh, coming from Xbox to PS3. It's no, like, no, no, no. People are really asking, is, it this, is this coming to the PS3, man? Yeah, that's what I meant. That's what I meant to say. Yeah, is it coming to the PS3? And like, and like Bandai or Bamco for the longest time, just kind of shrug it off and shrug it off and shrug it off and shrug it off. Until shrug it off. they released it on PS4. Uh, it took the, how long? But at least it took them long it. enough. A very long time. But here's a the decade. thing, though. Here's the thing, though. Yeah. But it's, I mean, what's the difference between the one we got and the one that... Oh, wait. We got the PS3 version, but... Yeah. On PS4, yeah. Right. So, really, uh, there's really no reason to go back to the original. But if let's just say, for instance, this game didn't exist on PS4 because it didn't at one point. Yeah, this is like the must have game to play on Xbox because it literally was one of the best games on it. It was. It really was. It was one of the best JRPGs on it. There's no question that. Yep. So what can we say about Vesper that hasn't really been said by us? <coughs> the visuals in Vesperia, it's just beautiful, man. Uh-huh. It's like beautiful even, it's pretty, like uh, still the best graphics. looking it's still like the best looking Tales game out there. Uh, yeah, yeah. It it definitely had a nice uh color so, palette to it uh, cuz all the other games that had a back like a washed out gray and brown color palette uh, Eternal Sonata in this game had a really good color palette so I was pretty happy about that. The sail shading just looks beautiful in this game, man. Especially when you get to Halor, which is uh, and you see the flower petals. It, it, uh -huh. it's just, this game is just uh, drop dead gorgeous. I'd honestly say it's probably at the time of this video, it's like the best looking Tales game, still. That's uh, until Tales of Arise comes out. Until, uh, Tales, until Tales of Arise. Yeah. Tales of Arise looks gorgeous, but like, I just feel like, like the Zillia games, as they're great games, but like visually, they're just kind of average. And the Mysterio yeah, just has really with the cell shading. Impressive. The art style and this and the character design and the of Vesperia, all that is just a gorgeous looking game. <clears throat> okay, the combat system. Uh, this is probably 
the most evolved version of the Sifonia style combat system mm. out there. Uh, yeah. It's robust. I would say it's each character, it's definitely the best yeah. best of that style. Yeah. Each character is t uh, tons of fun to play. Uh, there's a lot of arts combinations. There's a lot of depth to it in terms of the skill system. Uh, altered arts. It's Burst just a really arts. well. It's just a really well put combat system altogether. Now it's not my favorite combat system, but I can't understand why people would consider Tales of Despair to have their favorite combat system. It's a, a really in depth, robust combat system that's a lot of fun to play, and there's a lot of replay value just because of the amount of depth it has, the amount of characters you can use, especially in the PS4 version where they added Flynn and uh, Patty. Yeah, they're they're a great addition. Yeah. And I also feel like Vesperia has one of the most likable casts in the whole series. I love, I love Yuri. I love Judith. I just love that whole cast and Rita and every. They're all great. Yeah, I think they're really likable too. Yuri is especially the coolest, like the coolest bro you could ever have in the game. Mm -hmm. man. And, then, and the and the skits and the interactions, all the every all the the character dynamics yeah, feel just probably, so genuine. It's yeah, yeah. just so well put together, the entire game really. But like they they the interactions are humorous. They can be heartfelt. They can be serious, and it feels but it all just feels like like real. They feel like a family, basically. Mm hmm Like all like a, a big like a big like group of friends that just that actually bonded, and they are they all just feel it's a great put together a cast the chemistry is it's almost perfect it's, it's, it's just a great cast. it's almost opposite of uh Berserio, where where they're you know, like all they're almost like they don't clash but they're all they're also kind of like they're, some they're, of them are like enemies I'll, I'll, to each other i probably say that Berseria is the most individualistic tales cast out there mm -hmm. everyone has their own yeah. drive yeah. their own motivations which but they're all just they that's mm -hmm. makes them interesting well, like the whole like the probably... dynamic with like Eleanor and yeah. Velvet, like how they're you know. Yeah. Vesperia is probably the most tight knit cast. I feel. Mm -hmm. Though Grace is probably still has the most funniest skit to me. Yeah, yeah Grace's skits are gold. Especially in the future arc. <laughs> hey Asbel, you want to do it with me? Uh, yeah. <laughs> and then Malik's like, heh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think the the overarching story of Asperia is it's okay, it's okay, but it's just not spectacular. It's just like it's kind of it's it's enough to keep you going. Like I feel like there was enough intrigue. I probably say, but it's I probably say that Vesperia does suffer from bland from having bland antagonists. Yeah, like I don't. I'm trying to. I don't think there was like one antagonist that actually stuck out to me as even decent, which, which is, is in which stark is, contrast which, which, to other which, Tales yeah, games. Yeah, but which is really uh, because other Tales games have really fascinating antagonists. Like for the most part, in other Tales games, the villains aren't necessarily bad people, just kind of misguided. And like I, even I the, when they're, I feel like the, the second arc uh, tries to do that, but. They don't really develop him enough, I think. In terms of, you know, Duke. Yeah, like, I think Duke could have been an interesting character, yeah. but I just feel like he felt kind of, like, mishandled. And I feel like uh, that final arc in general, I just feel, didn't yeah, really it just need to felt, happen. It just felt like they were chewing in traditional Tales elements when they didn't need to. They'd be like, like, hey guys, look, summon spirits. Hey, let's Remember that? bring in summon spirits into this game. Just out of, no out of nowhere. Yeah. But I like the, the kind of like vigilante that, story they got for Yuri. I probably say that the theme of justice that the game emphasizes on is kind of dropped for the third act, which makes it feel pretty jarring. Yeah, it feels more like it's about like fucking climate change yeah. <laughs> at the end of the game. Like it. Even like Zillia did the climate change theme a bit better, I think. Mm-hmm. Because it shows like in Zillia, it shows like why people need to spy or be right, and mm -hmm. why just getting rid of it isn't like this good all solution. It's not. Why, yeah, it's not the answer. Yeah, and why in the Vesper is like, 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 let's just get rid of all the blasting, yeah. <laughs> okay, like, like river healing magic. 
Uh, who cares about the people who are sick? Yeah, who man? needs that? <laughs> who like, needs that old like, thing? I, like, Zillia actually <laughs> shows, like, how people need them. In terms of like not only the, in terms of convenience, but there's like people like dying who needs those spear rights to survive now. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Yes, yeah, so I, I yes, I guess Zilly did, yeah, Zilly did a better job yeah. with like it's a similar story beat, yeah. sort of, but Zilly did it better. Yeah. But like that's okay. the thing, I, I don't think that the overarching story of Asperia is bad. It's it's soft. It, like, it's, it, there's it, enough it, going on. It's okay, but yeah, it's not it's the fine. best tale story, I think. Like I, I think, like the Vigi uh, there, are, there are definitely yeah. other Tales games with better stories. Like, like I think the I, most, the most interesting part of Tales of the Spear story is the Vigi Ant visual anti part of the story. But uh, but it, yeah, I, I agree that it kind of it doesn't ex it doesn't isn't really explored go, as much. It, it doesn't it's, it's, it's not explored mm -hmm. as much as probably would have wanted. Mm -hmm. Because uh, I thought uh, you, like that there'd be actual punishment for the Vigi anti actions. But it sort of just peters out. They, they they allude to Yuri like being punched, especially with like the whole thing w that was really well done was was with Flynn, and when Flynn like confronts Yuri about it, he, like when he but he I... figures it out, but it just doesn't yeah. doesn't really, like reach really reach a satisfying conclusion. I I do feel the problem with Flynn in that story is that he's never really proven right, kind of. Mm -hmm. Which felt, but I, which made I, I think he was. So yeah. I think that overall that he was a pretty good foil for Yuri, though. Yeah. He's a good foil, but I just wish that Yuri's vigilantism got like more consequences to it to make the story more mm -hmm. interesting, because it just make it feel like Yuri's right all the time. Right, which I mean, you, I mean, you, you could debate if Yuri was in the right or I mean, those guys. I'm not gonna like I'm gonna say what happens, but. Those guys were fucking shitty. Yeah. They, they were super shitty. But can you imagine if he actually, like, uh, killed somebody without, like, that was actually doing his job? And not just, like, mm -hmm. some uh, townspeople were just complaining about them? Mm hmm. Like, that would have been a really dark direction. Yeah. That would uh, that would have been really interesting. Yeah. But I think that Vesperia makes up for it by just having, like, a really amazing cast of characters. Yeah. But, like,. Overarching story, I think that like, like Tales of the Abyss like, is much better in that regard. Like, Versteria is better. Yeah, like Vesperia's strongest point to me is its, it's a fantastic combat system, its visuals, uh, the voice cast is especially great, and mm -hmm. uh, the cast of characters is just the most likable cast of characters you can find in a Tales game. But story mm -hmm. is not the strongest point. It's, it's kind of, it's kind of forgettable. Oh yeah. Oh wait, wait just one more thing. Uh, do you, do you guys remember Tales of Vesperia's uh, side quest? Uh. Do you like time-based side quests, man? If you didn't go oh. back to this part, too bad for you. You don't get to do <laughs> the side quest. Uh, which oh, I don't remember which part. Which what, what was that? There, there was a bunch of time-based side quests in Vesperia. Oh, uh, I hate fucking I hate Missable. Yeah, it wasn't this too, but Vesperia is pretty much rampant with it. They mm -hmm. uh, they only uh, they only stopped doing that at like uh, Zelia, which is like way too little, too late. Yeah. <laughs> and Zelia too has like tons of side quests, but they all suck. So, uh, any thoughts? on this very oh oh one more thing I, I think yeah. I, I think oh i do want to say one more thing yeah. uh it's not the best but i think that vesperia soundtrack is actually pretty good all things considered like from a toy soccer bus soundtrack yeah, i think yeah. it's pretty good tragic decision is probably the most memorable track for me yeah mm -hmm. yeah i think it was the most memorable too yeah, well to there's a reason I'm, there's a reason i'm uh because just kind of kind of what what uh bison sent earlier with everything going on right now with the whole um, curbside and orders and stuff, yeah. you know, it's it, picking up your pre-order for games um, during this ep this pandemic is kind of interesting because yeah. that could affect a lot of things. But anyway, yeah, uh, that, that, I'm sorry, I kind of threw me off for a second. Yeah. Well, uh, I want to say this though, since I was since I didn't say much earlier, I was going to say about Vesperia that I 
haven't finished the game. I, I've gotten kind of halfway through, and the reason I haven't finished it is because I was still playing other Tales games at the time. And every time another one would come out, I would try to play that one. And I'm, I'm kind of guilty. I don't... The, the, the Tales games, I'm, I've always kind of been finishing all of them. Because I've yet to still finish Symphonia 2, and then this game, and Grace is Elf. So, yeah. And Sword's saying you need to finish it now. Right, Sword? Yes, you do. Yes, you do. <laughs> I knew. It's not, it's not my oh, yeah, and I haven't finished yet. Basiria either. No, uh -huh. <laughs> Sword's like, oh, no, no, Sword. Okay, Basiria. Dude, you gotta get on that, man. Yeah, yeah people keep telling me I need to. People just, uh, Shintai told me to drop the game like a hot potato. Play that one instead. It's definitely better than Zysteria. Yeah. yeah. But now, I want to um, finish Zysteria, though. The thing, okay, well, here's the thing. You will enjoy Berseria more if you've already played Zysteria. Yeah. You will get more out of the story. But the gameplay is so garbage. I I don't think it's garbage. I just think it's flawed. Yeah. But the, the just, camera. Dude, but, the camera but, the is but the water the camera, temple. The camera kills the camera. Zysteria. The water yeah, temple and the camera. But I think oh. I think Ar I think armatization is really cool. Yeah. Okay. I you think, know what? I, think the game I will say this cool. right now. I will promise you, Swart and Peter, to a point that I will go back after I finish Natural Doctrine. I will play and finish uh, Vesperia. Armorization feels like a less interesting link mechanic in the game. Yeah, yeah. I, I will. I will go back and play it. I will go back and finish uh, because Vesperia. Um, oh, and oh my God, that equipment grid system can die in fire. Oh yeah, remember Vesperia's skill system? I forgot about that. Yeah, that, I mean that was pretty good. I mean it's it was basically Final it's Fantasy. just Final Fantasy Nine. Yeah, Final Fantasy Nine, that's what I've heard anyway. But it's fine. It's good. It's pretty. Interesting. You know, has nice sense of progression. It, it, it allow each weapon to feel a bit more purposeful than just being like mm -hmm. a stat boost. And I do like how. So that was nice. I like how significant each skill is in the game. Mm -hmm. Like, I think Vesperia is the best implementation of skills in the series. Either that or yeah. the Zillia games. Because uh, Vesperia and Zysteria didn't do, don't do skills well, man. No, especially Zysteria. <laughs> like, because, Vesperia's... Because huh? most of the skills in Vesperia like, actually changes your playstyle. Why mm -hmm. in Zestaria, Bestaria it's just only stat boost, which is nice, but it doesn't. Feel they they don't feel though. significant. Yeah. Yeah, it's like I oh, guess you can. You I guess what you're trying to say is in this game it feels like it feels like it matters. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, great game. <laughs> and I guess that's. Yeah, I wish all. I could say more about uh, uh, the spirit man. I just, I just didn't play enough of it to really say you know more about it or have anything really to say about it. I just know that it, the well, what I played of it, I like it. I like I like Vesperia, so. So that's every Xbox 360 RPG I can't think of. That's at least Xbox. RPG, RPG. Hey man, hey man, we can talk about Fable Three. Oh, hey, where's Battle Fantasy? <laughs> no, please. Fantasy no. Star Universe, man. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah. That that doesn't. I never, count I never that played that it. Was, though, that was so on, that was on, play, that was on PlayStation Two first, yeah, so it doesn't count. Then. Yeah. Um. I have a lot of fucking things to say about that, though. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but overall, though, as far as JRPGs, I think that's it. Because that, that, I can't think of any others that came out for it. I think that was overall, all of them. I think it was an interesting period of time. during Because that, like, in terms of JRPGs, those were it, basically. Mm-hmm. Yep. And, and they're not and, oh, man. the do you, best. <laughs> do, you guys, do you guys remember the time period where we had to wait for Grace's F? After Vespera. Oh my uh, god. Yeah, that was a. There was like a. Yeah, that was like a four year wait for a season. Yeah, we was all excited about it when they first announced it. was like, oh my god. Yeah. But that yeah. wait to get that game was like. It, it, hey man, at least we didn't get stuck with the with the Wii version, yeah. which is a glitchy. Yeah, true. I heard, that, I heard the Wii version had a lot of problems, though. This is really glitchy for some reason. But what, hey, but what, when was the transition from us getting the Xbox to PS, uh, the PS3 JRPGs? What was the first game that solidified us moving away from Xbox? Grace I'm trying to remember the transition of what game it was that Grace's kind F. of... Huh? Yeah, for me, it was Grace's F. Yeah, I, I think Grace's F was the first one. Yeah. That definitely solidified it, yeah. Overall, like, yeah. most of the 360 RPGs were pretty mediocre, I think. 
but mm-hmm. they're still they're still nice because at least we had some JRPGs to play through. I will say though, as I said earlier, the the, the three games I would play, or well, rather not three, would be uh, Vesperia, Magna Carta Two, and Enchanted Arms. If I had, if I really just needed something to go back on Xbox and didn't have any of my other consoles to play, yeah, yeah, I would. Yeah, those would be the three. About right. Yeah, we'd we'd be here all night if we also in- included Western ones. <laughs> Shit. No, it'd be a ten-hour uh, conversation. Yeah. Uh, like, oh man, Fable. Uh, oh boy, Fable. Fable, Fable uh. three has the worst. <laughs> Let's make that a whole game. other video for another it, time. It, Fable we don't two has make... the worst. I don't want to mix another Western the, game. The easiest game in existence. Like it is baby's first RPG. <laughs> Isn't it that easy? Like, like yeah, pretty much. You can't die. You you get knocked out. You get right back up and lose a couple of experience points that you can get back very easily. Wait, it was so like there's no Fable dying too. It. it was it was the same thing in Fable Two as well. Yeah, but I feel like yeah. Yeah, no. Yeah, like Fable, I think Fable yeah. 2 is easier because the final boss in Fable 2, uh, you don't even have to do anything to beat him. Uh, so are we going to start talking about Western JRPGs now? No, no. I mean, no, when I say Western no, 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 no. Let's just end it here. Yeah, uh, yeah before, we, before we get carried away. So, well, that's our first rendition of Cyrus Gaming Corner. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Well, hold on. Before, you, before we finish, there's one thing I want to say. We do have one person who watches our video. I've been meaning to mention him. I got a chance. Um, I want to say special thanks to um, give me one second, Oliver Bethel. Bethel. Yeah. Uh, he's one of he's a follower on uh, Twitter. Follows me on Twitter. Um, and he follows a couple other people here, if I'm not mistaken. But yeah, he actually does watch our videos. So I did want to give him a shout out personally. So I do appreciate all the time you have watched us all of our channels he's actually have seen a couple of our videos on other channels so oliver appreciate it much appreciate it man i, I appreciate, appreciate you it, following us appreciate you man so that's all for today's cyrus game corner stay safe out there guys since it's a pretty scary world out there now just wash your hands wash your hands and don't go out as, unless you have to take care folks <laughs>